Hey, I'm back. Sorry I'm having like some audio issues, but hopefully um, you can still hear me. Um, so yeah, these are my adeniums here. Well, I have like 40 adeniums in the backyard, but um, I did pick a few varieties to show you um, at different stages of life. I have the whole family right here. Um, here I show, I want to show you here is this is what a little baby adenium looks like. Um, I grow all of these from seed. Um, the reason I grow them from seed and not from cuttings is because if you do them from a cutting, let's say you cut this guy off right here and put it in the ground, um, it will develop into a plant, but it won't really have like a really thick um, caudex here, which is kind of what I'm looking for. Um, so I usually grow them from seed and it's relatively easy. Um, and I can talk about that later in a different video, but yeah, so here's a little one. Here's what they get when they turn a little bigger. Um, this one's probably about a year or two old. Um, this one will, it looks like it already flowered, so um, they will flower relatively quickly. This one's probably about four years, maybe. These two are actually the um, same age. I don't know if you can see this guy right here. But yeah, these are actually the same age, so they will develop into different forms depending on, who knows what, uh, depending on what their parents were like. Um, but yeah, this one's flowering, and it's also, I chose this one because I want to show you what um, the seed pods look like. These are the seed pods right here. So they're very um, long. And once these kind of open up, the little seeds have little um, like furry tips and they get picked up in the wind and then they fly off. Um, so you can try to kind of um, tie it up with wire if you want to keep the seed from them. But yeah, I did want to show you what these kind of look like. Um, and here is another, like I said, they do get quite um, tall and I have several of them so it's always kind of fun to see the different shapes that they make. Um, these are all Adenium obesum. So Adeniums, um, they are um, caudix plants, caudiciforms or caudices, which is multiple caudix, um, which means that they will develop this fleshy stem right here. So Adeniums, like all the rest of them are, um, that I've shown you, are succulents. With adeniums, you also have to be careful about um, sunburn because the stem can get a little sunburned. They don't have a lot of um, protection up top to um, protect that stem. One thing you also have to be aware of is that they can be prone to rot. Um, so just develop a, a soil mix that works for you, but also um, drains quickly for them. Um, but in the summer, don't be afraid to water these as long as they're actively growing and you'll know because they have, they'll be developing more leaves um, or they'll be flowering. Um, but yeah, this is such a fun family. I've just, I've had so many um, fun experiences with this um, genus. So I definitely encourage anyone to try growing them from seed. It's really easy. So um, I'll talk more about that in another video. Up next, I'm going to show you um, a variety of cacti. So here's a few pickings from my um, general cactus collection. Um, these are, I chose these to show you different varieties that exist out there. Um, I guess I'll start from this side over here. Um, this is a Echinocereus virechii subspecies moracaulii. This has really beautiful um, purple flowers. It's relatively spineless um, and I believe it comes from um, South America. Very, very beautiful. And the thing about cacti is that they have really stunning flowers. They may only last a day or two, but when they do produce the flowers, they're amazing. Um, over here is an Oreo Sirius do, do, do Elzianzis. The names are tough, but um, sometimes they refer to this as like as an old man cactus. Um, great thing about this one is that it has this like kind of fur on top of it. It's so cute. Um, but that helps um, for a couple of reasons actually. The um, fur helps collect dew in the air. These grow in the Andes in Peru. Um, so like I said, it helps um, collect dew in the air and it also helps shield the um, stem itself from really harsh um, sun. So um, there are reasons why it has, you know, this kind of fur over here. Um, this big guy right here is a ferrocactus Hamatocanthus subspecies Langehamptus. I screwed that name up completely, but this one also has really beautiful flowers and it just finished, so I'll show you um, in a photo what it looks like. But this one produces two different types of spines actually, these kind of sharp um, straight ones over here, and then it has these little um, kind of 
spiral ones that grab onto you. This actually grabbed onto my um, mic um, and it kind of pulled it a little bit. Uh, great, great plant. And I actually have these little guys up here that I wanted to show you. These are the little versions of Faro cacti um, and they already have the little like spiral um, spines right there. Fun plants. Um, oh no. Okay, over here I have, this is a parodia. I don't know the species. Um, stunning yellow spines and they're almost um, soft to the touch. They almost feel like fur. Um, these will get really tall and long. Um, another variety with some yellow spines. This is a Noto cactus. I'm not even gonna say the the sub or the species, but if you want to know, I can type it out. Um, beautiful coloration. It's almost like a bluish hue to it with those bright um, yellow spines. Very nice. Over here, I have several um, gymnocaliceums or gymnocaliceums. Um, this is a gymno right here. This is a gymnocaliceum Mahanavicii. Um, variegated, another variegated. This is a Gymnocalicium damsii. Um, these are so fun because this is what is actually used on the moon cacti that you see everywhere in like Home Depot and whatnot. The interesting thing about this is that um, you can, in certain situations, grow the um, highly variegated um, Gymnocalicium without the um, rootstock at the bottom that's providing the nutrients. Um, if there's enough chlorophyll in the, the stem or the cactus itself. So it's a really fun plant. Um, you do have to be a little careful about it getting too much sun because it will burn. It doesn't have a ton of chlorophyll, um, but I just love this. I, had, I got it as this tiny little thing and it's been growing so well. Up here, this is a mellow cactus. I think these are native to Brazil. I also got this as a tiny little seedling um, and it's been growing quite well. Um, thing about this plant that's really interesting is that as it grows up, it will develop a cephalium, which is a kind of looks like this little hat, but that's actually its, um, its flowers. And um, that's where it kind of reproduces and um, crosses with other um, mellow cacti. But yeah, great plant right here, relatively easy. It's getting a little burned and you can tell it's, if it's getting burned, if it's getting too um, light green. This little guy is a Mammillaria sab saboe, cute little thing. Um, this is a Mammillaria, another one has really nice flowers in this early spring. Um, this is another Mammillaria right here. Um, and this guy, this produces really beautiful um, flowers. This is a Echinopsis subdenudata. Um, and the flowers are enormous, so I'll have to put a photo of that as well. And I, I just really love these plants because the, the flowers that they produce are just really stunning. Like you see these shapes, I mean they're interesting on their own, but they also produce really beautiful flowers. Up next are a general collection of a few succulents I want to show you. Okay, so this is kind of like the miscellaneous group. So let me just go like straight through them. So let's see what we got here. This is a um, Dion Edule. Um, this is a cycad, so um, this is probably one of the oldest species of um, plants on the earth. Um, it is prehistoric, it's pre-Jurassic period. Um, so this is a pretty amazing plant. It probably will outlive you and I. Um, beautiful um, kind of forms, a, a small, short, um, palm-like um, plants. Uh, here is a Kalanchoe um, elk antlers. Um, I got this from a friend on Instagram. Um, so it produces these little tendrils here and usually there's some, um, there's like a little baby that you kind of plant. So you just cut those and it will reproduce that way. It's looking a little rough right now because it's uh, August right now. So it's rough on everyone. Um, but yeah, it's a fun little plant. Here I have a Bursera uh, microphylla. Um, <laughs> it's kind of full of a, some spider webs right here, but this is a really interesting plant. It would make for a very good um, bonsai plant. I love collecting plants that have natural bonsai proportions. Um, these have cute little leaves up here, so they could eventually be trained into something like that. But I just, in general, even without training, I love the shape of it. And I do need to clean this up. It's just full of spiders. 
Uh, but that's growing outside and I think that um, is a little refreshing because many of us grow um, these super pristine house plants. But the reality is uh, plants outside are full of um, all sorts of critters and that's how um, it should be really. Um, here I have, this is one of my most favorite plants. I need to repot it because it, <laughs> the roots are falling out. This is also another kind of natural bonsai um, plant. This is a Operculicariae decariae. Um, I love this. It forms a codex on the bottom of very fibrous roots. Um, and it's so much fun because it just, it, I have it really tightly um, potted right here. Um, it should be in a much larger pot, but I just love the proportions of these beautiful um, small leaves coming off this um, very um, weathered looking trunk. It's a lot of fun. Here I have a, I believe this is a Matalia cyclophylla. Um, I could be wrong with that, but this produces um, these little star-shaped flowers that um, smell like rotting flesh. Um, <laughs> so you can tell that they're trying to be um, pollinated by flies or you know gnats or something like that. Um, this forms a very um, cork-like codex down here. It just feels exactly like cork. This also looks prehistoric, but I'm not sure if it is. This one right here, I believe is some sort of Hylocereus. Um, I got it as a tiny little leaf from a friend's mom, just a cutting that she wanted to give me. Just put it in some um, potting mix. Uh, I did this about a year and a half ago, I believe. Um, and it's grown all this new growth right here. Um, so it's very cute. Um, eventually, I believe it will produce some really nice flowers. So I'm kind of excited to see that. And this guy right here, I don't know if you can see it very well. Ooh. This one right here is a stapelia, and um, it's a little rough right now because uh, I need to water it more often, and also, like I said, it's August. Um, but it does produce those very enormous um, flowers, so I'll put up a picture of those. Um, relatively easy care, I just, it does not like a lot of sun, though, so I make sure to um, give it some shade. So um, up next are some seedlings. Oops, I just realized I didn't talk about these two plants right here. So this is a um, Cissus tuberosa. It's from Mexico um, and it produces these really long vines right here with really interesting and intricate um, leaves. Um, it does produce a little codex right here. So that's where it's storing all its extra moisture. Um, it's a very interesting plant. I love it a lot. And it um, readily tries to offset. So this is actually a root that's trying to form um, so I could basically snap this off right here and put it in a new pot and it'll form another entire plant and codex. Um, and this one right here is actually really difficult to hold because it's so sharp. So this one right here is a dikia and it is a very, um, it looks very much like a sort of bromeliad. Um, this one actually just bloomed a few weeks ago and I believe that there were some seeds in here. They were probably already all spilled out, um, but it has a striking rosette form, and I believe this one's even trying to divide into two or three because it has two rosettes forming. Um, it's a beautiful structure, very architectural, and um, it also has, I think these are trichomes on it to collect moisture, so um, another great plant, and these are um, often in the um, trade, so they're easy to find. All right, now actually to my seedling. So I brought in a few of the seedlings that I have growing outside and I just wanted to show you just a few varieties um, so that you can kind of get an idea of what is possible with seed growing. Um, one thing of course that you need to know is that you need to have patience with these plants, especially cacti and succulents. I've said that already, but it's a very important point to drive home. Um, here I bought a, these came from actually this and this. These actually came as seeds from Mesa Cactus, um, which is located in New Mexico. I think it's Belen. Um, great, great company to work with. They have some of the rarest um, cacti and succulent seeds that you can find. So if you have an opportunity to buy from them, definitely do it. But they have a long wait list. Um, I think even before I've waited like four months to get my order, but it's definitely worth it. Uh, but yeah, this is, let's see, Lobivia. Famatamensis right here. This is probably two years old, maybe even older. Here I have a collection of um, Lobivia hagiana. Um, I just put these in here recently. There's a top dressing of um, expanded shale. 
Unfortunately, they're kind of flopping around, so I need to either see you try to like stake them in a little more or something, but maybe it's just um, part of their um, structure of how they grow. I need to look at that. Uh, here is a Iber Ibervillia tenuous secta. Um, this is a really interesting plant that I wanted to grow because I love the leaf shape. It's really beautiful, but also um, as it's growing this vine, it's developing a caudex under the um, surface of the soil. So it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger each year. Um, I actually don't know if this one's even developed too much and I don't want to look too far into it, but um, I'm, I love like really um, sculptural um, codexes. So I'm hoping that kind of turns into that. So I have several of these going. Um, this is just one of them. And this is a, this is a mouthful. Uh, this is Cephalopentandra echirosa. Uh, this also forms a really interesting um, codex on the bottom. So I, grew, um, I bought that for that reason as well. But these are, I have several going on from seed. Um, this, these were actually sown at the same time. So these are about two years old also. So you don't necessarily have to buy your seeds from a specialty seed shop. You can also cross some of your own cacti, um, assuming they are related and from the same genus slash species. Um, it depends on the levels and how they cross, but um, you can make hybrids between different species of the same genus depending on the plant. So that's what I tend to do with uh, my astrophytum. If I see any astrophytum um, flowering, I just go and cross them. Um, I don't even write down the cross anymore, even though I know I should, but I don't. Um, I just do it because I love just growing them and I don't really mind if I don't know exactly what I cross to find them. That's probably um, blasphemous, but that's that's what, how I feel. Uh, so yeah, this these are some of the um, astrophytum trays that I have growing. I have several out back, but I just want to show you, um, here are some myriad stigmas that are a little older. So um, they're getting there, they're getting there, but these are probably like two years old maybe? I don't know. They take forever to grow, um, so just be aware of that if you are going to try to grow um, astrophytum from seed. Um, I think that's all I have to show you today. I know it was a lot and I talked really fast, but I did want to get through all the plants quickly. So I hope you enjoyed this tour. Um, I know it wasn't outside, um, but I hope that bringing them inside, you would be able, be able to um, focus better on the individual plants. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. Um, if you liked it, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, um, and I hope you have a, a great day and I hope you um, enjoy your own cacti and succulents. If you don't have any already, be sure to get some. So I'll see you in the next one.